All right, so we are continuing with assignment one, and I wanted to start with our Canvas course just so you can see where the straightforward requirements are for the assignments. Off of the homepage, there is a link called Assignment Sheets. You scroll down, and you will see that Fantasy Landscape is worth three points. It's our first assignment. These are all PDFs, which are viewable and printable on any device. And they are always just one page, right? But the basic requirements of this project is that we composite, which is the digital equivalent of collaging, right? With the addition of changing colors, changing lighting, um, softening edges, and stretching, and flipping, all things you can't do to a magazine, right? But you can do digitally when you're collaging. At least five found landscape compositions. So that means we're going to take things from at least five separate references and arrange them into one large fantasy landscape in the manner that you feel is most appropriate. The final resolution of this should be no fewer than 300 pixels per inch. This will be standard for our portfolio projects. We need them to be at least 300 pixels per inch by the end because that is professional printing standard and you don't want to have anything in your portfolio that's sub-professional level, right? And there's no reason for it. You just have to set up your file the right way. And at least eight by 10 inches. But what I will demonstrate is always larger, usually for assignments, an average of 11 by 14 inches by 350 pixels per inch, which gives it more versatility. You can print up to poster size that way or down to 8 by 10, all with the same file. If your desired print output is larger, and I don't want you to make a landscape file that is larger than 13 by 19 inches, uh, make sure you have adequate pixels per inch. Now, what does that mean? Well, because we are not creating our own pixels, instead we're adapting from existing pixels that we found, you need to be able to find reference that is large enough for what you want to make. We can't just grow everything, otherwise it will be soft and it will look amateurish and it will have a lot of digital noise. Okay, so your five references, how do we put them together? They need to be blended. Blended is a really, really important term here. So it's not just like cutting out a magazine and sticking them on top of each other. We need to make it seem like it's all believably part of the same scene. And it's believable, but th that does not mean, in air quotes, realistic, right? Believable simply means that it all works in the same universe with each other, right? But that universe can be as fantastic and as crazy as you can imagine. So think of the term fantasy and try to get excited about your ideas through that term, right? And fantasy can be just like today's world, but with a plant that doesn't really exist, all the way to something that doesn't match our physics, doesn't match our optics, has a mist that's uh, a rainbow spectrum that transcends everything, and water droplets are covering the mountains, you know, whatever it is. So fantasy can open up to hopefully a lot of things that you can get excited about. How is a, an assignment like this assignment different than the exercises we've done? The exercises we've done were, were basically meet the requirements or not, right? You get full credit for it or you don't, or if you don't meet the requirements but turn something in, you get half credit for it until you do meet the requirements. Assignments are just a little bit more complex in that we are aiming for portfolio quality projects here by the end not just something that demonstrates a new skill. So the only way you can get a zero is by turning nothing in by the deadline. And if you turn nothing in by the deadline, that is professional suicide if you are a creative professional, right? If you just don't acknowledge the deadline and don't turn anything in to your art director, you don't really have a job anymore, right? And you can be blacklisted to other creative agencies. So that's the worst thing to do, but that's not a problem. Because as long as you are staying engaged in the class, you'll always know when these deadlines are. They never change. They're in the course outline. That is our Bible. We stick to it. And even if you don't, can't make it to class on critique day, you can still upload something to PhotoBucket, right, to acknowledge that deadline. Just like if I'm doing a job for an art director and I break my arm, I can still call my art director <laughs> and tell them what's going on and tell them I'll need an extension, right? But if I don't make that call, doesn't matter that I broke my arm. So by turning something in by deadline that doesn't meet the requirements, 
which means it's still in process or it's a picture of your dog. Right? By turning something in to acknowledge the deadline, how do you do that? You put it into the correct assignment folder in Photo Bucket and you title it with your name, just like we did with the assignments, by the critique deadline. That will get you a point. A point is not great. It's only 30%. It's a failing grade but it's better than nothing. And most importantly, it allows you to turn something in again that is an improvement and you'll get the new score, right? And you have all semester until our second to last class period to resubmit assignments. Two points. Earning two points means that you really gave it an effort to meet all the requirements and you did. You met the requirements, but it still needs work. It needs polishing. For a fantasy landscape, that means that you have five elements together within a landscape, right? And that you are trying to match the composition you are working towards. But some edges need a lot more polish still. There's um, a dust cloud that looks like it was, you know, cut out with an X-Acto knife. It needs to be softened and blended. The colors aren't matching yet. The lighting isn't matching yet, right? And so that just means it takes a little bit more work to make it professional quality. So I, when I look at it, I see an exercise or I see a student project. I don't see engaging artwork yet. And whenever I give you a two, it will also come with comments of what, at least from my view, are clear things that need to be improved. And they should be clear, hard to argue things that could be done better, right? Earning three points means that you turn something in by the deadline that meets all the requirements and you've taken the extra effort, right? This is to get the 100% the on it to really engage the viewer as art. And you're gonna all want to do this for some assignments this semester, but it probably won't be for all assignments this semester. We do a lot of assignments, right? So out of nine assignments that I grade, the ones you want threes on are the ones you want in your final portfolio the ones that represent your best ideas and what you want to show off and say that you can do. The ones you get twos on are the ones that you tried, you learned what you could, but you're just not feeling it and you just couldn't stand it anymore. Right? So you'll live with the two. And that is perfectly fine. <laughs> that is what we call professional discernment. And this isn't a specialized class in concept illustration. right? So we do concept design in the beginning to learn compositing, but if you don't see yourself as a concept illustrator, I'm saying as a Digital One instructor, I want you to learn these skills. They're gonna be helpful to you, even if you wanna just be, animate characters or design props you know, in the future, or whatever it is. Um, so it's up to you to decide which projects to really engage on, but to get that three, it probably will take more time than what we are given in class, right? It will take using lab hours. It will take engaging a little extra in those projects. But that's true of any art. To make it good, especially when you're just learning something, you have to commit a lot of time and resource. All right, so the tips for it. Um, a big tip is in finding reference. So that's what these first videos are about, knowing what your vision is and then finding appropriate reference for it. And remember, this is the beginning of the class. This is assignment one out of nine that I grade. And then assignment 10, you will be grading each other. Um, assignment one out of assignment nine is the most technical of our assignments, which means it has the least room for huge conceptual risks and huge creative leaps. I've actually given you your compositions, right? So I'm, I've already taken a lot of control as the art director for this assignment because I really want you to be able to focus on these techniques. But as we master these things, the technical falls away more and more and it gets replaced with creative freedom because I trust that you have the skills and you get to really um, run with them. All right, so there's always an assignment sheet. It never has pictures. It's a one page written document, but that is what's called the brief. So in the design world, that is the job that you are filling. That is what the client has given you. And that is that has the basic requirements to it. And it is written down for you, along with the grading structure. Remember, as long as you submit something, you can resubmit later in the semester with improvements and get an improved grade. Because these compositing skills might be difficult for you this assignment, 
they will be a lot less difficult for you on the third assignment. And then you can use those better skills to improve earlier assignments. Okay, so how do we get good reference? Well, let's remember that we are being guided by a sketch. And for this semester, I gave you the sketch. And I wanted them all to be this postcard format. That sketch is loose, and all it shows you are shapes. right? So we get to decide what those shapes are. So the one that, by process of elimination, I am doing this semester is the one that no one in the class wanted. But I think it's a great one because all this is are puzzle pieces, and I get to decide what fills them up, right? And I can fill them up with one thing, or I can fill them up with seven things. So this middle ground here, I see it as kind of a dust cloud, but it could also be crystals, rock formations, lava flows, a, mixed, a mixture of everything, right? But what do I mean when I need you to follow this composition? It means that these shapes within a postcard frame, those are the shapes that you are required to, to match, just like you matched with your shape composition. So if you have a great idea for like a world tree avatar kind of thing, then I would have to make this into a world tree. And I wouldn't have like a big tree in the middle, right? Instead, I would be focusing on a branch of the world tree and like the city in its branches kind of thing. And in the background might be a floating mountain, a sky. In the near foreground, I could put a jungle, um, a lake underneath. But I need to match this composition. The reason that's important is because these were designed so that when all of them are put together, they will make one huge scene that the whole class has created. It's an experiment but I want to give it a try. Right. So in that way, you are working like a concept artist. You are not just doing your own unique thing. You are adding your own ideas to a group project, right? Like the next Star Wars movie. So this gets us into what, what is this professional skill we're learning? And this skill is environmental concept design. So if you wanted to go to a, an illustration program and you wanted to focus on entertainment environments, they have a lot to do with landscape. So if you look up environment, concept art, environmental in this case does not mean ecological or recycling. It simply means the design of environments, right? This is done as the concept stage for any kind of narrative art-based story. And there's no shortage, right? And it can make some beautiful digital art, whether it's for game design, whether it's for movies, whether it's for animation, whether it's historic or fantasy. Ooh, chilling. So, what this is not is character design. That's another type of concept design. So the other parameters for this project is that we do not want to create anything in them that is what's called a figurative element. We want no animals, no people. These are clean background designs that we will later be putting creatures into and animating on top of or within, at least having the option for that. So this. This is concept art, but this is not a fantasy landscape design. Instead, this is what's called a story point. So we do not want to include people yet. Now, does that mean we can't include this giant hand? No, that giant hand is a, not a figurative element anymore because it is not expected to be moving. <laughs> right? It has now become this kind of wrecked architecture in the landscape. So you can definitely show evidence of humans or animals. You can have destroyed buildings, uh, destroyed uh, vehicles. You can have buildings that are uninhabited, right? But you can't have things that we would expect to move. And that goes beyond just living things. I don't want you to have torches or fire in this. You can have electric light. 
But the reason you can't have fire yet 